Hi guys and thanks for watching again. In this video I will be building the power supply for this cross LED rotating device I bought from Banggood which came without any proper manual and I'm going to build a power supply using my own circuit board with these dots of copper on there, my own provided header pins which I will be using as connectors for the motor, the LED and the coil and um, the rest of the components is provided by this kit and I drew, uh, I made a drawing on my PC with some layout for this board and I'm going to show it to you. It is ugly but I, I want to show it anyway, it's just a layout of where I'm going to put each component. So there we go. Now this is the drawing I made and yes it is very ugly. <laughs> As you can see this is where I started and I was starting nicely making the real nice font on there, printing ECB for uh, <laughs> collector base emitter on there. Uh, but it took me way too long so I switched to the pencil mode over here and started drawing. Uh, and this is the result. Now let me switch back to the layout from which I cut this. This is the left side of this is the power supply and the right side of this is the board, the printed circuit board which will be spinning very fast. So this is what we need to build. We Over here we have the battery, the motor over here and the coil and the infrared LED. So we need four connectors on there and the power connector which will be uh, USB powered in my case. Uh, the pins are a little bit too large, it won't fit on the circuit board so I will see how to fix that but uh, I think I can manage. So let me switch back to my uh, my drawing. Uh, so yeah this is what I came to, I started with it and I drew a red and a blue line over here for this will be the main power rail. Uh, the motor is just connected directly to the USB and the rest of the circuit board is uh, all about switching uh, creating some sort of alternating current for the, for the coil of course. This is the, the power switch and this is the connector. Yes I know they are very ugly. And there, here will be the connector for the infrared LED and here will be a connector for the coil. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to push in all the, the components on the board exactly like this and then I'm going to make all the connections. So let's switch back to the main camera and start soldering. There we go. So let's start by adding the components to the board. Let's start first by adding the B772 transistor. And I'm going to place it on the top of the board like just like I designed. And I do that because if this thing needs a heatsink, I don't know if it does yet, if this, this will be cooled enough. If it does, it is on the side and I will have space enough for a heatsink or some aluminium part. Um, and I'm going to add uh, R3 right now because it needs to be connected to the base of this unit and I'm going to get my mouse which is over here and I'm going to switch over there and R3 is 560 ohms. So let's see what do we have. So I've put them over here in the correct order, R1, 2, R4, 560 ohm, 10K, 560 ohm, and then 470 ohm. Uh, let me switch back to my drawing, so R3 will be this one. Let's see. And I've calculated four positions for it. I don't know if it, I need that much. But let's stick to the drawing I made. Four positions. It's a tiny resistor and uh, let's see an R1, I reserved quite some more for that. Uh, R1 is over here and it's need needed to be on the length of the emitter, the vertical position of the emitter and then on the right side of E3, so it will be like this. Let's see if I can push it in so that it looks nice. It's important, it needs to look nice. So it is positioned like that. And R2, I need a reserved R2. Reserved four positions also for that one. Alright. And 
R2 needs to be on the, this transistor. needs to go on there like that. So it, now it's time to start soldering because uh, all well this will fall out. Let me double check if everything is still manageable like this. And it looks good so far. So yeah, I'm going to start soldering. Um, I need to heat up my iron. So one moment. So the iron is hot. Let's start. And this switch, let me get that in focus, the common goes to the center pins of these three and then when it's pushed in, the middle one, the common is connected to either that side or that side and when it's pushed out like that, come on focus, it is connected to the other side so I will have to measure which position does what and I'm dropping it on the ground. It is finished and I've finished all the components. I added some DuPont connectors on there and I actually wanted to test it with this thing but I realized that I'm missing some components on here so 
And specifically, I'm missing, missing some senior diode, and the other one is not a senior diode. I don't remember what it is. And a capacitor, so I'm not going to connect it yet. I'm going to measure to see if there is some AC voltage on here. So let's see what it does. I'm going to connect all the all the pins. Now I've marked with a, with a little bit <laughs> too large marker. Coil L1 motor plus minus, so that's the voltage, and this is the LED. And I've actually not marked the positive and negative of the LED. So let's see what did I do. Uh, the resistor is connected to the negative. Yeah, negative. So that means the top one is the positive. It is positive minus. So there we go. Now, um, it's the only thing which is not wired super nice with two black wires. So let's see. Oh, no. There we go. So bottom one currently is positive, so put it on, on there. If it still fits, it does. Motor, positive bottom one. Coil doesn't matter. And Let's put this in there. Let's see if we can measure some, some AC current coming out of there. Don't know if it will work, but we'll see. Oh, come on. There we go. And of course, the power source positive minus. Um, let's get my meter one moment. So I've set the meter to 20 volt AC. Um, let's see. Let's get a, give it some power. Uh, I've already cut a plug. There we go. And let's see if something goes up in flames. Now the mistake was quite simple and stupid at the same time. I used the this this pin instead of the other one, so let's see if something goes up in flames while well, I connect it right now. Ah, motor spinning. That's a good sign. Well that was the easiest one to connect, so that let's see the LED LED is doing stuff. Oh and now it stops. Oh yeah. Because this power bank turns off if it doesn't detect load, and this probably is drawing so not so much power, so uh, so very little that it is uh, not detectable by this power bank. So let's get the other power bank. Um, let's see if I can measure some voltages on here. At, at least I should find something. Um, if I can find the wires, I can hold the wires actually. I'm detecting something, but let's turn it out. Oh. Yes, it is doing something. So, my guess is that it is working somehow. This transistor is not getting very warm, so it is not drawing any load. So, my guess is that it is working so far. And that's a good sign. So, what I'm going to do in the next video, I'm going to mount it all together and see what it does. So, for now, thanks for watching.